and welcome to Omni Bros Live. I'm Omni Dog from Omni Dog's Vault. Mm -hmm. And uh, did we catch? I wonder if we caught the very first part of that because it's just now saying live. I guess we'll have to find out. But okay. anyway, this guy right here. That's from a weekend geekdom. That's Geo. What's up, buddy? Yeah. Hey, you got it. <laughs> Doing pretty well, Jess. Uh, happy to go. be here. Happy to be with everybody in the chat and everybody later on that's watching this uh, pre recorded or whatever. And uh, just excited to talk about comics and hang out with my favorite friends talking about awesome stuff. Right on, man. It is fun to come here and talk with like-minded individuals about comics. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because before this, we were all alone, adrift in a sea of, <laughs> of just ink and ourselves, just floating in a world of nothingness, us in our own books. And oh, yeah. here on Omni Bros Live, we find ourselves, as you say, with like-minded individuals talking about comic books that we love so much, along with the people at InStockTrades.com, our fabulous sponsors. Talk about like-minded individuals. Mm -hmm. They put the fun in fundamentally interesting comic books. Well, Ooh. fundamentally interesting. I could have done better on that one. Fun, fundamentally interesting, fundamentally fun comic books. Your collected editions are up to 50% off there. And I just got notified on my phone that we are on the air. So that only took two minutes. So that's cool. Yeah. Same here. That's cool, though. At least we got notified. <laughs> uh, loyalty discounts add 2% to that. So mm -hmm. you potentially are getting your comic books for up to 50 52% off. Yep. Every quarter, there's an Omni Bros Live discount code. If you're in the United States and you order $50 or more worth of books, you get free shipping. I'd like to see you complain about that, you wankers. Don't bother because there's nothing to complain about. It's awesome. <laughs> fabulous customer service. Fabulous packaging. That's InStockTrades.com. Nice. Thank you. So tonight... We're going to be talking about news. No, we're not. We're going to be talking about hauls, previews, and reads. Mm -hmm. And you've already got a compliment from Make Havoc. Let's see it. Oh, the shirt. I was hoping somebody would notice. Check it out. It's an old shirt of mine with uh, Joe Mad Spidey. Oh, very cool. Yeah. <laughs> it's one of my favorites. As long as I'm putting stuff up, let's put this up. Good evening to the panel and the chat. Good, Good evening. evening. Good evening. Great shirt, Gio. I already said that one. Okay. Thank you. It's okay. Right. There we go. There we go. <laughs> okay. So. Um, <laughs> well, here's an opinion. Jess, there's always something to complain about. Millennials and all. <laughs> LOL, JK. <laughs> Yeah. I know all about those uh, LOL JKers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you can't complain about IST at all. There's their complaint proof. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I just packaged up. I used their packaging. I sold something on eBay and I packaged it up in. Uh, oh, yeah, Iku, you can complain because you're not in the US. Go ahead and complain. Go ahead, complain because you're not in the U.S. It's not my fault. Um, I used, uh, apparently I have a reputation, I guess, on, uh, oh, there's Extreme Gabe. Let's add him to the stream. There we go. Yeah. Buddy. Yep. Yep. What's up, Gabe? What up, man? Sorry, I'm a little late. The last second, okay. my oldest son was like, wanted me to read to him. So I don't uh, know that, that is fine. <laughs> That's okay, man. Uh, so I use, reuse the eBay packaging and I think I have a rep for packaging thing, things well, um, because, uh, I got a comment that said something like, you really live up to your reputation. And all I do is repackage stuff in, in, uh, IST packaging. 
Wow. Are you are you selling stuff on eBay? I, I missed the conversation. Uh, some stuff that if I can't sell it on the Omnibus Group page, I'll take it to eBay. Yeah, I got a bunch of stuff. I put a bunch of stuff up today too. I'm getting yeah. shit. Got to make um, space, man. These shelves are getting full. That is exactly right. I got to yep. make space. Yeah. So I um, I I did. I sold some stuff over the weekend. I made some space. Because I am going to order my ninth volume of TMNT, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. That's a book that's coming out. I'm proud of you. Yeah, you should be. You got me to get all the first eight, which I'm lucky I got, according to Gabe. He says a bunch of them are out of uh, play, uh, out of um, print. Out of, yeah. Yeah, there's a handful of them. So. But they always go, they come back and they go out, they go back, they come out, but it's one of those things that you don't want to be at that point where you're trying to read volume four next and all of a sudden volume four is out of print. So, and then you can't mm -hmm. get it. So, right. I made sure I got the first three and then, uh, um, oh shoot. I've already forgot his name. Uh, wow. Um, um, I know how nice of a guy <laughs> am I? He's not active on the page. Um, Wait, uh, I bet his wife is. Uh, he goes through his wife's account. What's his name? Uh, yeah, oh, that was uh, the last Jimmy. Package Jim, you get from him? Jimmy Pasantes. <laughs> What's that? I said that's the last time you're gonna get something from him. <laughs> Jimmy Pasantes. He's not real active. He goes through his wife's account. I think he travels a lot for work. Jimmy Pasantes. Um. So uh, yeah, Jimmy gave me. Uh, all the books, four through eight, which was awesome, and the uh, that Captain America that I wanted by Jack Kirby that I foolishly sold like three years ago and haven't been able to find out, find it since, uh, because it goes for crazy prices. It was like a seventy-five dollar book, and it goes for one hundred and fifty on eBay. So with the stuff that you're selling, do you have like a criteria of what you're pulling off the shelf? Yes, that's actually a good question. Um, either am I going to read it realistically? Am I actually going to read this ever? Or am I going to reread it? So if I've read it, am I going to go back to it and reread it? Or am I actually ever going to read this book? That's good. That's a good thing to mention because... For anybody out there who's looking to start selling stuff, you kind of have to be honest with yourself. And that, you're right. That's that probably is, the hardest part. Is yeah. Get, being honest with yourself going, you know what? This has been here for like three years and I forgot I had it or something like that. So, Or, you know, I read it. If it's good enough to read that one time, uh, you know, then you kind of start cultivating that space because real estate is on shelves is very valuable. So... I'm doing the same thing myself. So there's a lot of stuff I have to kind of be honest with myself about too and go, you know what? I'm never going to read this. I don't care about this. This right. is, you know, like I want to get rid of that uh, Jason Aaron Wolverine. I don't think I'm ever going to read that or care enough to go on with like Wolverine in hell or anything else after that. So that's probably going to go up on the, on the eBay sooner or later. Um, yeah. I, I looked at, and I know everybody loves this run, um, it, but I just looked at it. It's the Kirk Busiek uh, Avengers run with George Perez on art. Oh. And I everybody loves it. And I know I love Kirk Busiek. And, but I really, I just looked and I looked and I just, I don't, I'm not a big Avengers fan. And I just said, I am not going to read this. I like Jonathan Hickman's Avengers um, book, but I just looked at the lineup and I'm just, the Avengers lineup just doesn't do it for me personally. So I sold it. Actually, I didn't use eBay. I used the Omnibus Collectors uh, comic swap and community group to sell it to somebody. Um, Are you trying to tell me you're not a fan of Wonder Man and Black Knight? I I wouldn't say that. I'm <laughs> I'm wondering. <laughs> <Black Knight. laughs> 
I if if I have to choose, and I do have to choose now because I'm being forced to choose because of shelf space, I'm going with the X Men, and um, I'm have if if you're forcing me to choose on groups, I find the X Men more interesting than the mm -hmm. Avengers, except for the Hick Avengers. That was really interesting, and I'm going to reread that because I'm going to have to reread that. And Joe Chip, of course, brings up a really good point. What if you read it but forget everything, Jess? Whoops, where'd get, where'd uh, Geo go? Uh, I think his hamster died. <laughs> the hamster that runs the wheel that runs his internet. Uh, here He'll he be is. Back, hopefully, there he is. But okay. no, no, I'm the same way. I think with the stuff, I'm I'm gonna be I'm, like downsizing. What's up, Geo? Good to have you back. But sorry, I closed the tab by accident. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, I thought your your hamster died. <laughs> the one that's on the wheel. Uh, yeah. No, but I, I've been doing the same thing. Just I, I, I think I'm more of an X Men Fantastic Four fan, and that's, I'm sure that's a shocker to everybody, or and a '90s fan. So when I'm when I'm getting ready to pare down this collection, it's going to end up being I'm going to keep a lot of the '90s X Men stuff, probably most if not all the X Men stuff, uh, all the FF stuff. Uh, and the other thing is, they're probably going to be on the chopping block. I might keep the Daredevil stuff as well. I have all the Daredevil Omnis besides Silver Age. And that's one thing, too. I'm going to get rid of the Silver Age stuff. The Silver Age stuff, I just don't care about. Yeah. It's I don't cool, blame it's you. It's historic. It's there. Uh, it, it's, I mean, it's, it's, that, that's where everything began. But I sold my Hulk Omnibus, my Volume 1, because I just don't care. Yeah. And I'm, gonna, and I'm trying to get rid of the Thor the Mighty Thor Volume 1 Omnibus, because, again, I don't care. And yeah. that's what is out there in other formats, like Epics, where I think for Silver Raid stuff, I think the Epics are probably a better format, from in my opinion, from what my needs are and what I want. Yeah. Yeah, I I I don't blame you on the Silver Age stuff. It can be a chore to read. I And I'm saying that as a fan. I get that because... It is nostalgia uh, for me, but looking at it from a younger person's perspective, that stuff can be a chore to read. Mm -hmm. uh, Marvel and DC, yeah, I, I and DC. and it can be hard uh, to read that stuff. And I, what I want to read is modern day stuff. That's mm -hmm. the kind of stuff I want to read. Um, you know that that is really what I'm most into right now, and that's what I'm. Um, that's why I, I've got to stop, and I'm buying this stuff, and I've got to stop buying those Golden Age DC collections because I know the Silver Age is coming up, and I'm just not going to read those Golden Age collections um, because the Silver Age is coming up, and I want those. Um, and then the Bronze Age Batman, I'm definitely going to want those. A couple yeah, of them, anyway. Stuff. There's going to be some that I'm going to want. So I got to, I got to stop getting those Bronze Age Batman. I mean, I'm going to, I got to stop getting those Golden Age things because those are even a chore for me. And I, at 13, I would have, those would have been a godsend. But now, <laughs> you know, with, you know, when I, I can't even turn the corner of the room in here. I bump into stuff. I knock over something and a great book will fall out from image or something. And, you know, there's tons of quality, great stuff being put out right now. And I'm just not going to read. I don't blame you for wanting to sell Thor one. I sold that a long time ago. That is just too hard to read. Yeah. I mean, that stuff was made on the fly in that time frame where it was, uh, Jim, or not Jim Lee, sorry, Stan Lee was just coming up with basic ideas as quickly as possible and handing it out to all of his artists. So the stories are not that great. Uh, they were made for younger children at the time, and they were made to kind of just be read until they they fell apart and thrown away, and they were kind of there as a quieting mechanism for, for children. <laughs> And a quieting mechanism. That's because if you read Thor, you'd fall straight asleep. I don't yeah. know who Thor was written for, man. And that stuff, like, really, like, I mean, especially anybody who reads modern stuff who's grown up with a more modern, sophisticated, quote unquote, uh, style that comics have had in the last 30 to 40 years, that mm -hmm. 
that really tarnishes what they did back in the in the, the Silver Age of comics. It's really hard to read a lot of that stuff. I, I got the uh, Fantastic Four stuff because I think that's some of the best Silver Age Marvel stuff. Yeah. Uh, but like the Hulk stuff just doesn't make sense because they kept changing his his yeah. powers and attributes and his and his origin like every other issue. And you know, it's just things like that. So, and again, I could read that in the epic collection and, and get that experience out of it if I really wanted to read that stuff. I don't need to keep a massive, massive hardcover on my shelf that's taking up space where I could put more Clone Saga Spider Man books on. Because <laughs> I want, I want, I want the nostalgia stuff. I want the stuff that I have an affinity for that yeah. I've read yeah. and. I can imagine it in my mind still. Earlier today on Instagram, I was talking with some guy who posted a original piece of art from the Joe Kelly, Ed McGinnis Deadpool run. And I just from that page, I was like, oh, I know exactly what happens. This is the page where Deadpool is trying to grow his finger back, his favorite finger, which is his middle finger, because he got cut off earlier by Taskmaster. And everybody's taking bets on how long it's going to take. And T-Ray thinks it's not going to grow back. And it turns into this big thing. So it's it's stuff like that that I want to keep around in my collection and read, or even s- things that I think are essential, or yeah. that are, are historic in this era, or things I haven't read before that is supposed to be read that I missed out. A lot of X Men stuff I missed out on. So, what uh, other than that? What uh, I tend to do to go away. What I tend to do with my collection is that I just focus on the characters I really love. And then I famous stuff like famous runs or a famous story. So I don't try and complete sets. Uh, I mostly, when it comes to Marvel, I just collect Spider Man, Guardians of the Galaxy, and Fantastic Four and the Inhumans. But you know, I, I try and keep it between those four. And then somebody will say, "Hey, uh, for example, uh, that Vision book was great, so I'll get that Vision book and read it." But mostly, I just try and stay within. Uh, my top four uh, books. Like I have the the new Teen Titans omnibus, mm-hmm. Omnis omnibuses, whatever the uh, Marvel Wolfman George Perez stuff. I've got those. Yeah. But I never read them, but that is something I felt like I feel like I should have read, and I I, I need to read. So I got those. Mm-hmm. Um, but I mean, even some of the modern stuff I have now, I've read it. And I might as well just get rid of it. I mean, I might have really, 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 really loved Super Sons, but I might just get rid of that. Same with Harley Quinn. I might, I have that. I've read it. I think I'm good. I might just need to get rid of it. Those are two books that I'm going to reread. So I'm going to be keeping keeping those kind of books. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I definitely uh, am taking a hard look at everything. Yeah, I mean, because I I have a feeling that with Marvel's uh, uh, VP of sales, uh, David Gabriel, having such a connection with Omar and Omar being really good about communicating with him about what we need uh, or as a community, what we need and what we're after and what is missing out there. I think we are going to get in the next coming year or so a lot of stuff that we've been wanting, reprint and new stuff. And I'd rather have the room for that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Ooh, I'm not actually, saying it's going to happen, but I really, really think there's going to be, because I'm going to make it happen. I will I will go to Omar's house and fight him. But I do think there will be <laughs> an X Factor on the <laughs> sooner or later or uh, uh, the Thunderbolt. I think that's, you know, that's some good stuff out there that needs to happen. What up, t Nice. We got that. Thank you. Wait, very much. Two dollars and seventy nine cents Canadian. Yeah, I don't know what that is in American. Thanks for the quarter. (laughs) You could be nicer. (laughs) You gave us money. No, I'm just teasing, man. I'm just making fun of Canada. I'm not making fun of you giving us money. That's awesome. Ninety nine cents from the collector. He's a repeat customer, man. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you. Did he ever get into the group, or is he just still trying to pay us for it? Oh, the collector. Have you gotten into the group? Uh, Omar. I mean, Omar still dug his garage sale on his way to Alabama. Um, <laughs> uh, the collector. Have you gotten into the group? Or have I dropped? 
still 99 problems. Does that mean you haven't gotten into the group? I'm still out. Uh, wait a minute. Did I tell you to... to um, okay, let's do this. Because I'm signed into... Um, Oh, it's two dollars and eleven cents U.S. dollars. Okay, excellent, awesome, man. I'm I'm really sorry that if you took offense to that, I'm just I'm just teasing around. Ryan Tam. Okay, what? Uh, I okay. All right. Um, okay. <laughs> make sure you make sure you um try again tonight, and I will right after this. Try again tonight, and right after this, I will um uh make sure you get in. Okay, I wrote your name down. It's right in front of me. I will definitely do it. Just that PayPal. Is affirmative. I'll, 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 we need a PayPal account where people could just pay us to get into the group. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Try um, uh, apply again, and I will do this right afterwards. Paper cuts. That is affirmative TV, action. I love it. Yeah. No, I can't do it now. I mean, Where I guess I? I could do it. Actually, yeah, I could do it now. Okay, apply now, and I'll go do it right now because I'm on the group. Um, yeah, Rich Ooh. Jackson, I don't care. You can do it too. Do it now, uh, the collector. I'll do it live. <laughs> I'll write it, and we'll do it live. The screen share. No, I don't want to do that. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, no. Let's see. <laughs> okay, so uh, go ahead and... Uh, so everybody Bye. give us a thumbs up because we're, we're actually letting people into the group today. Okay, well, no, we're not. I'm letting this one guy in. Yeah, for 99 cents, you get into the group today. The gates are open. <laughs> people are going to start flooding the group. We're going to reach 6,000 members. That's right, and we're going to have to build a wall. <laughs> What's up, T2 Fallen Comic Books and Other Outdoors? That's a really long name. That is T two Fallen is a uh, a recent fan of mine. He's just recently subscribed, and I think he's subscribes to all our stuff. Mm -hmm. He made the right choice. He did Good for you. Okay, wait. Let's see. Seventy six hundred people want to join to get in. Okay, how see. many? Seventy six people. Let's see. Holy crap! What's the name? <laughs> oh, it's been up. To, it's been up to like. 200 before. Oh, I'm sure. I'm saying except Ryan, except the collector, and then deny everybody else. <laughs> Automatically. Okay, yeah. Wait. So the collector, yes. Everybody else. Ryan Tam. Oh, oh. How did you learn about this group? Jess. How long have you been collecting comics? Very long time. <laughs> okay, wait. <laughs> do, 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 do. Approve. You're in, dude. Okay. There we go. There you go. Okay, there you go. You're in, dude. Did you deny all the other 75 requests? Uh, I didn't. I can just do it one uh, person at a time. Well, just pick a random person. Just deny them. <laughs> <laughs> Christopher Banda. Here's a good question. I'm trying to convince myself I'm buying the Authority Omni. I need a selling point on buying it from you. Uh-oh. I don't hear worry. mixed feelings about it. Okay. Don't listen to these mixed feelings, people. First mm -hmm. of all, you got to get Stormwatch Volumes 1 and 2 because uh, it'll make a lot more sense. Um, it's one of Warren Ellis's best uh, books. It's almost as good as Planetary. Not quite as good as Planetary, but it's almost as good as Planetary. But... It'll make a lot more sense if you get Stormwatch 1 and 2, but here's the big but. I like mm -hmm. big buts. You also have to get mm -hmm. on, you can download it. I went on eBay and got a physical copy, but you got to get Wildcats versus Aliens digitally to read between issues 10 and 11 on Stormwatch Volume 2. I, it doesn't make any sense, but in this issue, and between issues 10 and 11 on volume two, he, well, I don't want to spoil it, but something happens. The first appearance of the authority happens there, more or less. Yeah. He wipes out the old team and introduces the new team. And if you don't get this issue, 
you'll read volume, you'll read issue 11 and go, what the hell? I don't understand. And it doesn't make any sense, but it's a crossover with Wildcats. And you don't need to worry about Wildcats, but wait, you got to read this issue. So get Stormwatch um, 1 and 2 and download this issue and get the authority omni and you will be really happy because it is solid top-notch writing uh super fun super interesting way outside the box thinking like warren ellis does really well um i i don't have a problem with the second half like some people do with mark millar's second half on it i i thought it was just as it was just as interesting some people like to nitpick and say, oh, it's not Warren Ellis, blah, blah, blah. I thought it was just as fun. The art is great, and I thought it was just as fun. So there you go. I, don't listen to those mixed review people. Just get it and have fun and take a deep breath and say, comic books are fun. I am enjoying myself, and people who are down on it are nitpickers and don't know how to have fun in this world. Haters going to hate. Okay, so with that that Wildcats aliens crossover, what's yeah. really weird is it's an aliens crossover. Yeah, I know. Like it is Xenomorphs wiping just just it's it's a great great bloody nasty story, but <laughs> they they did it using a completely different property. Like they could have just so that's done why that it... within its own storyline, but they used the Xenomorphs to do it. Yeah. So is that it's why so, the it is, issue is not on the books? Yeah. That also doesn't make sense. It's a rights issue. Yeah. They couldn't, hmm. they couldn't, it's an IP okay. issue, as we like to say. Got it. Well, I've never read it, but I, and I'm interested. So I may do uh, that as well and read all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, Final yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, it's weird. <laughs> that is just so <laughs> odd. I if I hadn't have known ahead of time, it would have been really a weird reading experience. That's the quote for that issue. Yeah, it's weird. <laughs> there's no. a there's a trade paperback that has that Wildcats aliens. Uh, issue in it. Oh, yeah, but it's usually kind of pricey. Not pricey, pricey, but it's morning cover kind of thing. Huh. It's called, it's called uh, mm. Stormwatch uh, Final Orbit, I think it's called. Huh. Okay, I didn't know that. I've got the hard covers and I just bought the book. It collects uh, issues 11 and 12 and then that crossover. But yeah, all you really need is just that issue. How much is that issue going for? Let me see. I don't think it's very expensive. I hope not. It might be one of those things where they're like, wow, it's 50 bucks. What's up with that? No, I don't. I don't. I think it's still cover. I say two bucks. And you can, it's not that important. You can always just get it on Comixology or yeah. something like that. However, my, you get your digital comics. My comic mm -hmm. shop has. 6.0 copies like a, a great like a fine like so it's kind of beat up for six bucks yeah you just need to read it i just like the idea of xenomorphs being in that universe and just wrecking everything and change literally changing the course of that of those characters I also like the fact that uh, Trigonosis got super baited by me on Instagram and now needs to buy all the X Men animated series DVDs. <laughs> Go look for that, bro. I think it's number volume two is like the expensive one. Or you could just get it on Voodoo. I might just do it on Voodoo because it's like 15 bucks a season. <laughs> Here's a good question. We need Lou in for this one. When is the comic books for kids collection starting? I'm working on my budget for the next few months. <laughs> I think you meant to say next few months. Um, yeah, 
we uh, we need to come up with our our uh, annual uh, fundraiser for comic books for kids, and we need to fi figure out what we're going to do for when we raise the money, how we're going to humiliate and or make ourselves sick uh, when we get the money. <laughs> we need to figure out the target and what we'll do when we reach the target. Good question, Nick Schmidt. Well, I thought it was if we do hit the target, whatever the target is, uh, yeah. you and I have to read Akira. Uh -huh. Oh, and what? Okay, we have to read Akira. Right. Yeah. And what does Lou have to do? That is to be Just determined. Just to Kelly Sue DeConnick. He has to. Oh, he has to read something by Kelly Sue DeConnick. No, he has to cosplay as her. <laughs> she has all kinds of piercings and weird hair and everything. <laughs> That's actually kind of funny. Yeah. But still, I kind of do want to see him read those books. Do a review on uh, on the Captain Marvel stuff. And, oh, that uh, was it. Yeah. Cosplay as her and read her books. Or was it pretty deadly? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He needs to go to work dressed as Kelly Sue the <laughs> Oh, wow. <laughs> On Halloween, he could do that. Yeah. Explain to the kids I'm Kelly Sue the The what now? It's okay. Don't worry oh, the kids. woman who wrote Captain Marvel? We love her. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's see. Um, um, um. Mm -hmm. Is the Stormwatch stuff the DC run or the earlier image run? Uh, my copies say DC on them. And they're hardcover. I think it's both. Yeah, I, I, I feel like it says DC and Wildstorm. Because at first it was, it was an image Wildstorm title, I believe. And then I think during... During that time is when Jim Lee sold his studio to DC. Yeah. And then, because I'm almost positive that's when the Mark Miller stuff was going on. Mm. That, that was going through DC because that was a big thing because Mark Miller was essentially like doing a, uh, a parody on the, on the Avengers characters and he was killing them off. The mixed feelings is Omar because he just dropped a vid on it. Oh, well, I'll set everybody straight when I get my uh, copy. Good. Good How did he drop a video on it? Did he just How did it? he drop a video on it? How does he get his copy earlier? That's from DC. Well, here's yeah, the thing he about here's the selling point for, for apps. Uh, I'm sorry, for authority. Just said it was a day one buy and a day one read. And I don't think he's ever said that about another omnibus on the show. Yeah, I actually haven't. Yeah, you were like day one read, day one buy, day one review. Like you were just gonna go right. all in when that comes in. Yeah. Yeah, I it's uh it's in the mail. I got my notice today that it was in the mail. Uh it's not too complicated, G Scott eighteen forty seven. It's actually pretty simple. Uh, just read Stormwatch and this, and then read The Authority. Yeah, no, I will definitely read it and review it and be happy. I hope I get it sometime very soon. I hope I get it before the weekend, then I can read it. Uh, here's a good question. We're going to get to hauls and reads and previews soon, but we're getting a lot of good questions. Uh, maybe one of you two guys know this. I just bought the new Teen Titans Omnis. Other than those, could you guys recommend any good Beast Boy storylines? I'm not good with Beast Boy. I don't know. Um. He was yeah. the focus. He had some stories in the Jeff Johns run. 
if I remember correctly. He had a few storylines there. Titans? Yeah. Is that the omnibus he's talking about? Or oh, he's the new Teen Titans. Okay, so that's talking about the George Perez stuff, I guess. Mm-hmm. And uh, what was the other book I read about Beast Boy? Um... The new 52 Teen Titans is not great, so I wouldn't recommend that. Uh, uh, but I do like what Jeff Johns did with Beast Boy on his run, so I would just recommend that for now. Yeah, I'd agree with Gio. My only uh, exposure to Beast Boy is uh, the Jeff Johns on the bus, the original Teen Titans cartoon, mm-hmm. and the Young Justice cartoons. Oh, you like Young Justice? I know that. Oh yeah, so I would it's recommend great. that. I recommend go uh, check out those original Teen Titans uh, animated series, and then check out uh, Young Justice as well. Mm-hmm. We got another super chat, Jess. Ooh. Oh, we did. Yep. I'm looking at. I'm behind looking at questions. It's highlighted green. Green for Beast Boy. Green for money. It's green? It's green on my screen. Oh, I'm way behind. Uh, I want. I don't want to miss these questions. Okay. Uh, let's see. Mm-hmm. To be honest, you can read Authority without Stormwatch. Read Stormwatch later myself. That's true. That reminds me, I should probably sell my sealed planetary onomus. G. Scott, you are dead to me. Gabe, are, are you getting Gabe? Are you getting Batman Beyond the complete series when it comes out on Blu-ray disc this October? I got yep. that bastard already pre-ordered. Yep. Already pre-ordered. Already pre-ordered. I already I have the DVDs already, uh, but I love Batman Beyond. That's like one of my my favorite. A lot, lot, lot of my favorite comic book related stuff are characters who took over from older characters, and Batman Beyond, I think, did the best job of that. He's the only character to have ever taken over for Batman, and the entire fan community basically agrees that he, Batman Beyond, Terry McGinnis, is the next step of Batman evolution, like in the Batman line. Like nobody will ever accept even uh, uh, Dick Grayson as Batman. Even though he's done it before, he, it was awesome. It was great. People won't accept that, but they accept Terry McGinnis, and I'm good mm-hmm. with that. So, and apparently, they said if yep. the Blu-ray sells well enough, that will spark a fire to do an episode or a season four or more seasons. So, uh, that's all it took. I mean, to it, spend my money on it. Hmm. Look what happened with Young Justice. Uh, people petitioned for that for ages and we finally got it so nothing's out of the out of reach you know everything's possible these days and we could very well see a, a season four for uh batman beyond yeah i think it's just another case of uh the decision makers in whatever industry comics tv movie mm-hmm. whatever they they have a really uh poor grasp on on the uh the legacy of these of these shows and the fandom. Yeah. And how many people are actually out there talking about this series on a regular basis? So, I still have my DVDs. I need to sell those and upgrade to that Blu-ray set. <laughs> Dude, I have the original Return of Joker DVD that didn't have that had all the cuts that didn't have the all cuts and gore and like original yeah. ending and stuff like that. I have that because that's all that was out at the time. It came out. And I was like, oh, dude, I need this. I need this. And then you find out it's edited. And I'm like, all right, yeah, well, it is, it's edited. What, you know, I'm never going to, it's like the Snyder cut. You're like, oh, I guess I'm never going to see the original version. And then later, <laughs> they put out the original version. Yeah, I, I have the Blu ray for that. Okay. Meodity. Did we want to uh, save some questions and then move on with like halls and reads or? Um, sure. I'm, 
I'm pretty far behind on uh, questions. Um, I mean, I'm still looking at G. Scott selling his planetary Omni. <laughs> Uh, and I'm trying to figure out how to talk him into reading it first and, and wanting him to hang on to it. T2 Fallen says, your recommendations haven't failed yet, Jess. I bought books you have recommended. Joe Chip says, is Wildcat Aliens in the Wildcats abs Absolutes? I don't believe so. I think I think there is a, uh, a rights issue with, with reprinting that material. I mean, I could go look, but I remember... If that was in there, I would have remembered because that's a, such a dope story. Um, here's a good question. Maybe Gabe can answer this one. What's that? I'm waiting on getting the JSA Volume 3 and Gotham Central Omnis. Do you guys think they're going out of print soon? And I should pull the trigger now. Uh, I recently looked up and did an order for JSA 1, 2, and 3. So they're still available for stores to order, but it, through Diamond, it did say the stock was low on, I believe it was one in three, it said stock was low. I don't know exactly how low low is. Like they don't give you an inventory of like, oh, low means 100 or low means 2,000. I don't know. Um, but I think it's one of those things with almost anything, if you want it, just go and you know, snatch it up if you're legitimately thinking of reading it pretty soon because you don't want to get one, two, and then by the time you, get, you read one and two and you're ready to read three, it becomes scarce and out of control. And then you have to, not have to, but then you're, you're stuck with the decision of whether or not to spend extra money to get it. Uh, Gotham City, uh, Gotham, Gotham Central, I don't know. Um, let's move on. I'll look it up. I'll see. Okay. I haven't looked that book up in a while, but I, I'm almost positive that it's out of print and it's been out of print for a while. I just don't think there is a high enough demand, which is really, really sad because that book is incredible and is uh, underappreciated that there isn't. That's why you're not seeing it pop up as being expensive. I just don't think there's a demand for it. Yeah. Because if it was still available, I think I would, I would have ordered it for the store. If the Gotham TV show would have followed the Gotham Central comic, then oh. I think it would have been a completely different story with that omnibus. Holy shit, it's still yeah. available. Ordering one for the store now. Nice. So it's still out there. I don't know if it's on IST or not. Um, I would assume it is because uh, they should be able to order whatever I can order. So check mm -hmm. it out there. It doesn't look. It, there's no like low stock notification or anything that would. It's uh, the Omni is there. Oh, is it okay? So it's I'm not still seeing in stock. Like, any low yeah. stock alert or yeah. anything that makes me think it's going to go out of print anytime soon. Um, but you never know. It could be one of those things where it goes out of print right away now. Here is. Boom. Now that was not highlighted. Oh, I see. I'm not on YouTube. I'm getting stuff right on the uh, StreamYard uh, uh, page. So mm -hmm. it's not highlighted. That's why I didn't see this. Oh. Thank you, Justin. Thank you, Justin. Yeah, that's um, great, man. So, as a bit uh, late, are any of you reading House of X and Powers? My internet sucks. Oh, well, I'm sorry about your internet. I read House of X and I thought it was cool. And it was cool enough that I'm going to wait until it gets collected in December to uh, buy it all. I, that is something that I'm definitely going to want to read and reread. It looked really cool. I'm the only one that isn't up to date with anything X-Men, so I will probably wait for the collected editions. But I think everybody in our chat has read it, right? Yeah, I think so. I would have to. I, I, I'm assuming. I'm not sure about Riley, but Riley is a big X Men guy, so I would think he has. But yeah, uh, House of X is great. Uh, Powers of Ten. Uh, I haven't finished it yet, so I guess I'm the one who hasn't read it yet. But I'm enjoying everything so far. It's a I, lot of setup and build up. 
uh, but that's that's very typical for Hickman and very typical for something of this caliber where it is changing the ecosystem of the X-Men and starting an entire new era of the X-Men. And it's really awesome that this is happening 30 years uh, from X-Men 1, the Claremont Jim Lee, which happened 30 years after Stanley Jack Kirby number one. So it's kind of interesting. Mm-hmm. But there is a hardcover collecting all 12 of House of X and Powers of 10. I think that's coming out at the end of the year. And eventually there is going to be an omnibus. And oh, that first print, that, that, that omnibus is already out of print. Wait, what is? The Hickman X-Men omnibus. That's not out yet. Oh. <laughs> but you know that's going to be one of those things. Just like with Oh, yeah. Fantastic Four and with Avengers Volume One, it, it, it's going to get snatched up and it's going to it's going to fall out of print pretty fast, I think. Uh, I can assure you, young man, that I really do mean it. Oh, he means it. <laughs> yep. I bought. I already bought it, and mm-hmm. the question is, am I going to really read it as soon as it comes in? I hope Jess really means it about the authority being day one by, or maybe he was on his painkillers at that time. L M A O. I, uh, I already ordered it and we all know if I ordered it, it's good. But so. you didn't order it day one, right? You, you were messed up that day. Meaning it is ordering it the next day. Oh, that's right. I ordered it Wednesday. So I already screwed up. It was a day two buy. So, I'll try and make up for that by maybe I should read it online before it comes in. No, I will, I will read it as soon as it comes in. I'll tear off, tear it off the ceiling, the shrink wrap, and I will relax the spine and I'll read it as soon as it comes in. And I'll make that video as soon as I possibly can. Okay, do we why don't we take a break on questions and talk about hauls? Has anybody hauled anything interesting? I'm about to haul tomorrow because there's some awesome books that we're gonna talk about later that I really want. Okay. So getting ready for that. Well, I know uh, of, of a couple yeah. books I'm gonna haul tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have I, actually this is uh I'm kind of in a holding pattern. I haven't hauled anything. I've been doing the opposite. I'm getting rid of more, more things than I'm trying to buy. Um, but we'll talk about, same with you guys. There's some stuff coming out this week that I'm going to end up picking up for sure. Uh, do Does video games count? Because I got some old, old, old video games. They're not really old. Sure. Here, I'll yeah, highlight yeah. you. Yeah, show those things. Go for it. Uh, I got it for like 15 bucks <laughs> these two games. For the oh. Wii, Metro Prime 3, and Metroid Other M. Because one of my goals for this year, gaming-wise, is that I want to play every single Metroid game, and I want to own the whole Metroid franchise. So uh, I was missing these two, and I'm still missing an original copy for the NES and for the Super Nintendo. Uh, so, But yeah, I got these two a couple hours ago. So, yeah, That's a cool goal. Mm-hmm. I want to do a playthrough first and do like a video on my channel and then eventually start collecting all the rare ones and have like the complete set of Metroid games. I love it. That sounds awesome. I mean, Zelda and Metroid, those are my two favorite Nintendo franchises. I totally agree with the Zelda. That's for sure. I don't think I've ever played Metroid outside of the NES. I never played the the Prime stuff, but I want to because... It's such a different experience because it's like it's first person shooter with, mm-hmm. and, I, and I like GameCube a lot. GameCube is one of my favorite consoles, and I just yeah. never got around to playing that one. It was fun, man. It, it was basically it's Nintendo's charm on the Metroid series, but it also goes into um, survival horror because it is first person and you're alone on this planet, and then there's a bunch of aliens and and terrifying creatures and all that stuff. So it was a really unique experience to play uh, Prime on the GameCube. It's, I still own my two uh, GameCube games for that. 
I remember playing it on the GameCube and on the Wii. I liked it both times. Mm -hmm. And I learned that you can hook up uh, the old GameCube controller into the Wii. I've owned a Wii since 2006, and I never knew that. I, I am a <laughs> terrible gamer. So I'm really excited <laughs> to funny. play them. <laughs> uh, I hauled four books, and I will, let's see. I can highlight. Let's see. The first one was Multiple Man. Nice. Part of my X-Men buy-a-thon where I'm buying tons of X-Men stuff. And I got Astonishing X-Men 1 and 2, the Charles Sewell run, where I believe I needed to have it because this is where Professor X comes back. Um, so I needed to have that. And then I'm still giving Sandman Universe a chance. This is House of Whispers. Uh, so, uh, so far, this series is one for two uh, On for me. Uh, I liked, um, uh, shoot, what was the one I liked? I didn't like Lucifer, but I liked um, the dreaming. I liked the dreaming, but I did not care for Lucifer. Um, so that's what I hauled. Nice. How about Reed's jaw read anything? Well, uh, I, I I think I mentioned it. If 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 I did, I'm I'm sorry. But I did read uh, Ran and the Gray World Volume One. It's a it's a manga. Oh, so, I don't think sorry. you mentioned that. Plus, I love this cover. It's one of my favorites <laughs> that I've read. Uh, I love this cover so much. It's basically the story about a family uh, that uh, the mom in the family is this all powerful sorceress, and our lead. At top here, Ran, she is a little girl. And when she puts on these magic uh, 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 shoes, sorry, uh, she transforms into like the adult version of herself. And it's, uh, I still don't understand the reasoning why the mom is in it, like a, I think like a different dimension or something weird like that. And she is trying to get to her uh, because she lives apart from her. Uh, but it's sort of like uh, magic hidden within the real world, and there's a lot of fantastical elements, and the art in it is just uh, beautiful. I mean, let me get a panel here. Uh, I can't find the thing I'm looking for. Uh, you know, it's art like this. I don't know if everybody can see it. Oh, yeah, hold it right there. Yeah, the art is by Aki Edie. She's relatively new into uh, uh, the uh oh. I think we might have lost you a little bit there, Geo. Okay. Uh, well, this is a good time to highlight the five dollars from Enigma. Thank you, Edward. Cool, man. Did you have like a question or anything you wanted to attach to that that you want us to uh, to, to, to make a topic? Because if you gave us five bucks, we'll talk about what you want us to talk about for a little bit for sure. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. We can be bought. No, it's fine, uh, Gio. Yeah, we're total sellouts here. It's all good. Yeah. <laughs> five dollars gets uh, 99 cents gets you into the omnibus collectors group. Five bucks gets you, you know, whatever you Boy, want please. here. Mouth kisses by Jess. Hey, hey, hey. Easy. <laughs> Not five dollars. Wow. My internet goes out for a second, and it's already talking. We're yeah, already talking don't about be magic. pimping me out for five bucks. <laughs> Better make that money, bitch. Okay, wait. Here's the question of the night. Here's the comment of the night. Ooh, hi, Tyler Blood. Hi. How, how are you doing, chump? Uh, so, <laughs> what else did you read, Gio? Uh, where did I left off when the you were showing off? a picture from Ranma? Uh, ran in the gray world, so yeah. That's... Oh yeah, ran in the gray world. Yeah, hold it right there. That's good. <laughs> yeah, the art in it is pretty magical and and pretty awesome. I love the art, and um, continuing my journey through prison school. And I cannot show you anything that's inside this book because yeah, that disturbs me. Yeah, it's 
it's very not safe for work. I cannot show you uh, a single page because we will be uh, demonetized. So yeah, there okay. it is. So that's, yeah. that's about it. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, that's about it. Uh, pretty light week for me. How about you, Gabrino? Did you uh, get a chance to read anything? Yeah, I did. I am, or is it here? I have, speaking of Hickman, we've been talking about Hickman a lot uh, with everything going on. Uh, I have started reading the Secret Warriors omnibus. So I am nice. going to start the uh, very massive and very long and complex and uh, I'm hoping rewarding uh, Hickman readathon. Nice. Mm -hmm. So I've just started with this. I'm probably only about four or five issues in. I just started earlier uh, last night. It is so far really, really good. You are they're really, really good. That's just that's the stupidest review ever. Um, it is quite fascinating so far because this is the series where I think the movie, the MCU, uh, took a lot of information from because this is where you discover that Hydra has been taking, has always been in control of S.H.I.E.L.D. And it is Nick Fury uh, breaking away from that, starting his own kind of uh, secret mm -hmm. ops underground team with a lot of new characters that are just completely unknown to me at this point. And if it wasn't for, this is one of Hickman's early, early works. So early, in fact, that Brian Michael Bendis had a, was assisting him with the writing. Um, kind of like training wheels kind of thing. And then after that, it, it's all Hickman after the first six issues. Um, but yeah, so you get all these characters like Phobos. You get Baron Strucker is so far the, the main uh, villain of this so far. Uh, Daisy Johnson that you guys might know from S.H.I.E.L.D. or Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is mm -hmm. basically the, the main protagonist of, of the story. So lots of good stuff. A lot of the art... Uh, first off, the art starts out with the awesome, the most awesome uh, Alex Maleev, who I haven't seen for a while, and I totally forgot how much I, I enjoy his art and how different and unique and kind of funky that artwork is even today. Um, and then from there on out, you get uh, Caselli. What's his? The, Stefano Caselli is that the, his first name? Yeah, Stefano. Yeah, so you get a lot of his art after that, and it's it's his earlier stuff. So you can see where he's kind of began and where kind of his uh, limitations were and where a lot of uh, his room to improve is. But when you see his work nowadays, you kind of go, wow, this guy really took a big jump from where he was. But it's great stuff right now so far. Uh, this is the first of, I think, about 30 books involved with the uh, Hickman Readathon. Uh, there's a lot of stuff, not a lot, there's a few books in the Ultimate Universe uh, that you have to pick up if you want to do that as well. But great mm -hmm. stuff. Um, you get information in here. You, I mean, you start liking Daisy right away. She, she's pretty interesting. Uh, you get Phobos, who is the fear, uh, or the god of fear, who is like a 12-year-old little boy. You get uh, a lot of Hydra stuff in here. You get new Hydra agents. You get the resurrection of Gorgon, uh, which is this crazy uh, samurai dude. You get Nick Fury on a date with a hot girl. You get him teaming up with Dum Dum uh, Dugan, getting a new uh, team of the Howling Commandos set up. So it's fun. It's good so far. Uh, I know this is just the basic uh, groundwork when it comes down to a lot of stuff that takes place in here, pays off later in like the uh, Fantastic Four, and I'll pay off in Avengers and pay off in Secret, uh, Secret Wars. So it is, I'm just starting the very beginning of this long, long journey with Jonathan Hickman's uh, Marvel run. So that's what I'm going to be doing for the next uh, probably couple of months. So I think every week, more or less, I'll try to provide an update of where I'm at, what's going on, and uh, we'll go from there. I'll probably drop off a couple, I'll drop off a little bit here and there because I know how I am. And I'll need a, uh, a refresher or like some ginger, like a palate cleanser. And I might just move on <laughs> yeah. as well. It's just, it's just after a while, I just I, I need something different, so it's gonna happen, but yeah, so it's gonna be it goes to this and it goes into a bunch of the ultimate stuff Fantastic Four, Avengers, Secret mm -hmm. Wars. So there's a lot of good reading ahead of me. Yep, Secret Wars is great, I liked it. I'd say it's fun so far, it's really, really good. There's a uh, 
<laughs> Again, I, I, this must be, I don't know what's going on, but I can't tell what issue numbers it is in these books. Uh, I hate it when they do that, when they don't include the issue numbers on the covers and stuff like that. But, you know, I'll live with it. It's made if you just write them in big bunch. So, whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, do you want to put up the previews now? Let's put up previews. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Oh, this is my favorite window, by the way. I love Wait it. Wait a minute. It's like Did we're I do in, this like... right? Yeah, or we're seeing the window. But we're seeing us, too. Yeah. Did I want to do it there? There, there you go. Okay. Good. You got it? Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. So let's go ahead and let's. Uh, Jess, did we do an IST plug before I came in? Uh, yeah. Okay. You want me to do another one? No, no. I was just because uh, this is also where I don't do a plug, but I also tell people to go to in stock trade for the time. I don't remember a plug, but that must have been before I got on. Uh, yeah, so I, I did it first sure. thing. Yeah. It's important. Uh, all right. So here is this week's releases for the week of uh, August 7th. These go up for sale on InStockTrades.com tomorrow at 12 noon Pacific time, uh, 3 o'clock p.m. Uh, Eastern time. Mm -hmm. So we'll go in and check out InStockTrades.com. Uh, we'll also talk about what discounts or the 50% discount books are on here for InStock Trades as well. So we're going to start out with Image. This week with Image, we have Eclipse Trade Paperback Volume 4. We have Thief, uh, Thieves Trade Paperback Volume 7. Wow. Seven trades of that book? <laughs> Is anybody reading that? Are any of you guys like that caught up I, still read this? I only read like nine issues and dropped it. It wasn't for me. Wasn't this a failed TV show? Not that I think the TV show mm -hmm. had anything to do with the book, but it's just that just didn't Yeah. It never got picked up. No, I looked at the spine and saw it said Kirkman and dropped it. Right. <laughs> Uh, and here it is. Here is the final last trade paperback for The Walking Dead. And yes, for anybody who is worried or is questioning it, it does have issue 193 in it as the final issue. I know when 193 was first uh, released a couple of weeks ago, that was not included in this trade paperback, uh, which I'm pretty sure was a, a tactic so that people weren't aware of the significance of 193 ahead of time. Uh, uh -huh. Then Dark Horse, we have Aliens Resistance, uh, Isabella Hardcover Volume 1, Snow Glass, Snow Glass Apples Hardcover from Neil Gaiman. Huh. Doran. Oh, that looks cool. Uh, Spirits of the Dead and Trans uh, Terminator Sector War. IDW, we talked about this recently. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. I think all of us on this panel are going after the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles hardcover volume nine. Yeah. Uh, what does this collect really quick? Uh, 67 through 72. Uh, and then you also, oh, great. You get the uh, Ninja Turtles universe nine through 15. And TMNT Usagi Jumbo crossover. Oh, yeah. really? So I don't need the book that I have of TMNT Usagi Jimbo. Maybe Probably. I should just give that away. If it's a, why did I buy that then? Because this is probably before you were re getting into TMNT. You're like, totally uh, right. That's exactly why I bought it. Okay. And then uh, for any uh, artist. Uh, edition fans out there. IDW is also putting out the Star Wars Artist Edition from Walt Simonson. DC, we got something here for Geo. Hell yeah, son. And something here <laughs> for for Luis as well. And that's the Kelly Sue the Conic Aquaman Hardcover <laughs> Volume 1. That awesome. is our first 50% off. That is 50% off. It's $12.49 tomorrow. Is this nice. is this oversized, Geo? Do you know or I think it's standard sized hardcover. Okay. Boo. 
Yeah. <laughs> you get what you can get, right, Gio? Mm-hmm. It's the first hardcover for Rebirth, post-Rebirth era, uh, Aquaman. Oh, that's... Uh... Oh, really? Oh, that, oh, oh it's the first Aquaman that's hardcover? Yeah, none of the Rebirth... Uh, Drowned Earth was a hardcover, but none of the Abnet uh, run was in, collected in, in hardcover. Yeah, interesting. Uh, and then you have a, a new deluxe edition of Justice. I advise everyone to get this because the absolute is out of print and I don't know if they're going to reprint the absolute and this is the best way to get it. Not just that, but uh, Jim Kruger told me, and it's, it's on here as well, that there is a lot more bonus material. Oh, a hundred pages of bonus material. Yeah. That was not in the absolute. I think the absolutes were, I might be wrong, but I believe the absolutes were just strictly the stories and maybe some small, small, um, bonus material but this is like he told me it's like everything it's like some scripts it's uh like an interview as well i believe some uh alex ross uh information like sketches and, and stuff like that in there holy well. guacamole so this is a pretty good uh bargain and a very good uh substitute if you don't have the absolute yeah my favorite one of my favorite all-time comics and it's one of the first, uh, I think this is the first time it's been in a deluxe. I think the other times it was trade in the smaller hardcovers. Right. Nice. Yeah. And I might have to hit up Jim Crook and be like, yo, bud, you want to come on the show and talk about justice one day? That would be awesome. Yeah. He's cool. Mm -hmm. yeah. I have I have an idea if he does do that. We'll talk about that later. Uh, Scooby-Doo team up and Greg Rucka's Wonder Woman. Oh, can you highlight that? Let's let me uh, just see what it covers. I need to get that. I knew too. I don't have this. That's, I think that's the final one, right? Four. Yeah. That's I thought a provocative a, cover. I thought this is a new fifty two thing. Or not new fifty two, I'm sorry, uh rebirth. But no, it's uh Wonder Woman two eighteen through two two twenty six. Oh, and it has the Blackest Night stuff. So Blackest Night, Wonder Woman one three three. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, I gotta get that. That is an awesome cover by J.G. Jones. Uh, okay. Marvel Comics, we have Champions, Volume 1. Uh, Golden Age, uh, Marvel Comics, Omnibus, Volume 1. This is a new reprint of it. That is 50% off. And uh, nice. it's, it's a hard pass for me because I don't care about the Golden Age stuff. And it's only 13 issues. You wow. get Marvel Comics number one. You get Marvel Mysteries two through twelve for a cover price of one fifty. Holy <laughs> smoke! So, and then we get uh, really Kirby a Returns size stuff. I'm sorry, Gio. No, I'm sorry. I was just saying that you really have to love the Golden Age stuff if you want to get that omnibus. Yeah, that, that's for super fans. Uh, Marvel's Art of Conan the Barbarian hardcover. And that also, is 50% off. And we also nice. get a Marvel Comics 180th anniversary hardcover as well. That is also 50% off. Wait, what is that? This what is, is that? This is literally Marvel Comics number one, Saga to Human Torch number one, Marvel Zero, and Marvel Comics number one. Three issues? Apparently. Marvel Comics wow. 80th Anniversary Edition. Huh. Okay. That's 50% off. The uh, Old Kirby Man book. Mm -hmm. uh, so, sorry, Gabe. The Kirby book is the size of the uh, uh, Behold Galactus book, if, if anybody was wondering. Holy smoke. Yeah, it's it's one of those big ones. So Old Man Quill also comes out this week, uh, Star Wars Age of Rebellion, and a Star Wars Epic Collection as well. And then nice. uh, War Around Trade Paperback, Giant Man. Boom Studios has Power Rangers Shattered Grid. 
this is a huge, huge storyline for uh, the Power Rangers saga. And then we also have the Woods uh, Yearbook Edition Volume 2. Nice. I have no idea what that is. Don't you guys read the Woods? Yeah, the I do. Thing? I'm going to get that. I read it in floppies and I enjoyed it. And then down to here is kind of the uh, other items. The here. others section. Others. Uh, let me know if you see anything here you want to talk about, Gio, because this is usually like your section. Um, let's see. So far. Mm -hmm. Nope. Nope. I'm sure these are all wonderful books that, but we don't know anything about them. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm sure we're missing out on, on, on things <laughs> like this lady riding a motorcycle here or Robotech. Uh, Night is Short. Night is Short has an adaptation, uh, an animated movie that's pretty good, but I've never read that book. And everything else, uh, To Your Eternity, that's a great manga. And that's about it. I don't recognize anything else. All right, and uh, that is that, everybody. What are you? What's everybody in the chat going to pick up? I'm definitely in for uh, Ninja Turtles. That, that's yep. going to have to happen. Seconded. Now, I don't know if I'm going to pick it up this week, um, but I'm slowly going to start picking up those, those hard covers as well. I have the first four or five already, I think. I need that, and I, I need that Aquaman book, and I need that Wonder Woman book, and I need to get the Berserk Deluxe Edition Volume 2. Uh, I missed out on the previous two uh, releases, and it's in stock, so I should be getting it tomorrow. Oh, I'm all caught up. Okay, good. Caught up on what? Oh, whoops. I got caught up by accidentally skipping about 50 questions. Oh my God, 50 questions. That's awesome. <laughs> and uh, this week in general, I mean, there's a, it's a good week for, uh, for if you want to start picking up like any kind of like floppies or anything like that. Uh, Cause Donny Cates is starting the absolute carnage, which we've been talking about a lot, like that his Venom run has been so, so good. And this is kind of, what all of that's been leading up to so far has been this absolute carnage, which comes out this week. Cool. Uh -huh. um, I don't know how many pages was in that Marvel Omni, but if it's only 12 issues, well, those Golden Age issues were pretty Big. Pretty they usually have like four stories in it or something too. Yeah. But it's not going to, I don't know. That's to me, that sounds like a, even if it was 12 golden age issues, it's still not going to be that. Um, it's still not going to be that thick. 150 yeah. bucks though. <laughs> that, I mean, I just, I just, uh, that, I mean, I just looked at the Jack Kirby Bronze Age omnibus. That was 150 bucks. That made sense. That was 1,500 pages. Mm -hmm. The original printing for that Golden Age Marvel's omnibus was 125 bucks. Does wow. it say how many pages? Uh, I'm looking. The new one. I'm looking at the new one. That's it says 848 pages. Wow. And the original one, 832 pages. I don't know what the difference is. 800 pages for $150 that does not compute. Uh, yeah, that, that doesn't seem right for some and reason. I, I mean, we talked about how kind of hard it is to read Silver Age stuff. It's even harder to read Golden Age stuff. Unless you're reading like EC comics and it's all like crime and, and murder comics, that's a cool <laughs> murder horror comics. Book. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> super stabby. Yeah, like there's this one. I 
think it's Weird Science from DC. It's one of my favorite ones where uh, yeah, where this, there's this, uh, this uh, scientist working in a lab and his whole like crew or coworkers trick trick him in believing that they set something off inside the building that gave him that's going to kill him like some kind of gas or disease and it was a big joke and then he just murders everybody <laughs> i gotta figure out which one that was because he didn't like the joke no because he thought he was dying and that you know he's like Fuck it, i'm just gonna kill everybody then oh my gosh <laughs> The uh, Planetary Omnibus, that has 864 pages, and that was retail 75 bucks. It's probably 20 billion times more interesting than that Golden Age stuff. Uh, at least. <laughs> yep. And to me, yeah. it's not really about page count. Like, I'm not really, like, counting down the pages to really, like, you know, quantify if, I, if it's a good buy or not. It's, I don't think mm – -hmm. I just don't think any of that stuff is interesting. Yeah, that is weird. I wonder how they came up with that figure, though, for $150 for that. I mean, I get it for the Kirby Omnibus, and like for Infinite Crisis. I, I and get it's gone that up in price. price. And it's more expensive than it was, you know, well, that was like nine years ago or something like that. The first yeah. Time, but still. I think the price has to do with the fact that it's the uh, anniversary. Oh, yeah, because this is 80th on there, so it's an extra 25 yeah. bucks. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we figured that one out. Man, it's hot. Today sucks. Ooh. It's so hot, I'm going to have a couple of beers, like cold, cold beers. Nice. But I don't want to. All right, so... Do you got any uh, other questions or anything else we want to cover in the chat from all of our awesome chat people? Uh, uh, here's a good question. Are you worried about the Swamp Thing absolute recoloring? Have they released some sample pages? I haven't seen any sample pages. Uh, I'm not overly concerned about the recoloring. I think they could probably get it right. Uh, that said, I'm not buying it until I, I... I'm still on the fence about buying that Absolute. Really? Yeah, because to me, the when you buy an Absolute, it's really because you're in love with the art. And I, I'm in love with the story more than I'm in love with the art for Swamp Thing. Oh, that's right. Because you still have the, the the original like uh, newspaper print hardcovers, right? Yeah, exactly. So, I don't know. I if I was a fan of the ab, if I was a fan of the art, I would still wait to buy those. That's actually a pretty good question. I would still wait and find out what the recoloring's like. It could turn out great, but yeah, that they it, they could turn out messed up. Yeah. I'd wait a couple weeks and see what the early returns say. Mm -hmm. I've never read uh, Alan Moore's Swamp Thing, so I think I'm going to pick it up just so I can read it. Oh, yeah. Well, then it's, yeah, it's kind of a no brainer for you. And I mean, I've, I haven't seen too much where, in general, where recoloring has bothered me, but I did see it in the uh, oversized hardcover for Crisis on, Inf on Infinite Earths, where it just, they added a bunch of extra layers of shading and stuff like that that didn't need to be there. But I have the absolute for that, so no big deal. Ah, uh, this is actually a very good point here. I remember Omar that Surya things. I remember Omar mentioned that those Golden Age Omnis had a lot of restoration done to them. Maybe that's why the high price. That is a good point. Excellent. Yeah. Very good point. Could cost a lot to produce those Omnis. Very good point. Should have put that money into making the stories better. 
<laughs> Here's a question. I'm pretty sure we all agree on the answer. Do you think we will see a reprint of the definitive edition of the boys now that the show is out or another OHC version? Um, I think the answer on the definitive editions is no. They have a soft cover omnibus coming out now, the boys, and I think that's going to be it. Although you can't rule out an OHC. That's an interesting idea. That would be like a good idea. Premier edition? Yeah, they have the mm -hmm. tiny hard covers, yeah. Yeah, that's possible. And I think for the most part, besides volumes three and five, the definitive editions are still available. I don't know. I mean, I don't know how Dynamite or any publishing company really does their reprinting, but I don't think they're going to go back to print just for those two random oh, no. volumes. Not at all. Like if it was like a number one that was out of print or, or something like that, or if it was still selling, then maybe they would go back on three and five, but I just don't see that happening. But yeah, like you said, there is the uh, trade paperback omnibuses, and they're not even like that thick. They're not like omnibus-sized uh, omnis either. They're 400 pages, so they're really not that bad. Here's a good question. What's one omnibus you must have for 2019? Uh the authority <laughs> <laughs> could be Marvel or DC. What's hmm. the one omnibus you must have for 2019? My first, the first thing to come to mind was the Heroes Were Born omnibus. Oh, okay. I, I remember when that was solicited, I was I immediately knew I was going to own that. That was a day one. I didn't read it day one, but I definitely flipped through it and and, and had like tons and tons of flashbacks and, and fun stuff like that with it. But I knew the moment that that came out, I, 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 I lost all control of my body for a moment. <laughs> so that, that was one thing I never thought would ever come out because of how much, kind of, how how much that splits and divides, you know, comic book fans. So I never thought that would happen. So when that when that came out, that was an immediately day one buy. I'm trying to think of what else came out this year that was like an immediate like must-have thing. Uh, I'm not kidding. I think the authority. It, looking, I would have probably said the authority because I had really awful Wildstorm absolutes that were incomplete, totally incomplete, uh, and I. Uh, would have, I mean, I would have popped a cork had I known that that was, uh, that would have easily been my number one pick. So uh, that the authority I will stand as my number one choice for a book for this year. What about you, Geo? Uh, well, it's Marvel or DC, so I cannot include. Uh, Baltimore, because I'm really excited about that. Well, uh, we're so, going to let you include it. Yeah, you do what you oh, want. All right. Yeah, well, I'm want. including I'm including Baltimore. Unfortunately, oh, cool. the Aquaman omnibus is next year, so I can't include that. Uh, I I'm really excited about the Harley Quinn omnibus, so I can get that whole set of the three omnis. Ah. And. Um, do we still know if the Animal Man omnibus is is still going to come out this year? Because I was really excited about that one. The Jeff Lemire one? Yeah, because it is supposed, supposedly it's going to come out at the end of the year. But I, I haven't heard anything since then. Uh, that's a good question. I haven't heard that it's been canceled, but... I'll look it up real quick and see what I can find for you. That doesn't mean... Yeah, I don't know. It is. It is currently scheduled for December 4th. So, well, there you go. That's one of my most anticipated ones. That's a good one. That is a good one. That was one of those books when the New 52 hit where you're like, wow, this, this is, they're doing mm -hmm. something new and something different and they're taking a different approach. And yep. yeah, it, it was a great time with that. Until you got to that one issue where it was just a kid on his cell phone <laughs> watching a movie the whole time. I was pissed. <laughs>
<laughs> Sam Clexon, where have you been, man? Yeah, I haven't seen you in like a year. Wow, yeah. Jess, when you were a teenager, did you and your friends ever surf on top of moving cars like in Teen Wolf? <laughs> <laughs> you did that last week. <laughs> Gabe and I did that when I was out in Vegas. That's how crazy we got. We did whippets and then did that. Nice. On whipped, whipped cream cans. Uh, when is that Snyder Capullo Omni supposed to come out? Are we talking about New 52 Batman? Yeah. yeah. Uh, what are we, Google? Probably. Let's see. Uh, this, uh, supposed to come out uh, supposedly October. Yeah, uh, October 22nd um, on Amazon. So I'm pretty sure we'll see it earlier. Uh, yeah. October, Jesus, is it the same day as, uh, I think it's the same day that the Swamp Thing Absolute comes out. I have it as October 16th for comic book stores. Nice. Uh, That's going to be a big week. That is a big hmm. week. Oh, buddy. Brace yourselves. You're going to be <laughs> spending a lot of money. Mindfunk. Yeah, British are able to join the group. We have many Brits. Mm -hmm. yeah, we've got people from all over the world in, in, in the group. Yep. I'm trying to think of what's going to be the bet, uh, a must-buy for next year. Aquaman Silver Age Omnibus. Count on it. I'm thinking oh, the, yeah. Peter, the Peter David Hulk for sure. Mm -hmm. That Batman New 52 I think might be a must-buy for for this year. Yep. Um, I'm kind of glad I didn't get the absolute for Court of Owls. Uh, supposedly Eternal is still coming out. <laughs> That yeah, Monday fun. show is the Make the Bros Google show. I'm okay with that. <laughs> uh, Maverick uh, 1891. Yeah, we do still have House of X singles at the store. Um, I don't know. Are you local? Come by and pick one up. Say what's up. Get a high five from me. Speaking of comic books... You're, if you want collected editions, the best place to get them online in StockTrades.com, where you can get them up to 50% off. Loyalty discounts add another 2% to that. If you are in the market for comic book collected editions and you order $50 or more, you get free shipping from InStockTrades.com. You can't beat that in the United States. Mm-hmm. Fabulous customer service, fabulous packaging. That's in stocktrades.com. Yoink, yoink. Just as a good question in uh, the chat. Oh, who is that from? Jake Oldham. Uh, okay. October 33rd. Uh, That's birthplace of Alan Moore. It's towards the bottom. Okay. About Miles Morales? Yeah. Yes, for me. Outside of Jess, I have never... Okay, so the question is, uh, do you all have binding issues with your Miles Morales Omni? Um, outside of Jess, I have never, 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 never seen a copy of that book that did not have the binding issue. <laughs> I follow uh, uh, hashtag Omnibus on Instagram, so I get a bunch of like Omnibus pictures that pop up and stuff. And somebody had one on there of Miles Morales that they gave to their kids, and their kids were super happy, like like flipping through it. And I didn't I didn't care about that. But I was looking at the binding, and yeah, that was all jacked up too. Oh boy! Uh, I actually it's the last video I did on my channel. Uh, it's kind of my final send off video. Is a video of how to fix the binding on that omnibus and pretty much almost any omnibus where it's like a glue issue like that. 
So you go check that out if you need help with it. It's, it's, it's very, very simple and effective. I'm afraid to open mine because it is the, the binding is perfect. I'm afraid to open it. Show me. Do you have is it like within arm's reach? I want to see what mm -hmm. you're finding on that book. Yeah, it's just like a, this is the unicorn of all <laughs> arm's right It's a rarity. I just have to move a couple pops. Nice. It's awesome. Oh. That is uh oh. Uh oh. Uh, I think uh, it may have separated itself while I wasn't looking. <laughs> it did. Oh, uh, it's still sealed. No, yeah. No, it's not. Uh, okay. Well, Jess, I know a video that I can help you. Yeah, that's gone. Mm, yeah. Welcome yeah. to the club. That's every copy I've ever seen. Yeah. And I didn't do anything but just let it sit on my shelf. Well, I am now belong to the club. One of us. <laughs> bummer. <laughs> that is well, there a bummer. Is, there is a video on YouTube that I do recommend where you can find <laughs> out how to glue that omnibus. <laughs> you can it. find that real fast, and I'm going to put it in the chat. <laughs> Green Laser says Gabe's vid method works. Thank you. Well, now I need to know. Bummer. And it's weird. Oh, the man. bottom. I'm so fat in this video. <laughs> it was 30 pounds ago? <laughs> it was, yeah, 40 pounds ago. <laughs> no, the, yeah, the bottom is it's completely gone, too. Oh, wow. And I didn't even get a chance to read it or look at it. It just separated on its own. Damn nation. <laughs> D.H. McAdams says somebody switched it on you, Jess. Yeah. <laughs> somebody Who was, was here on. last? Omar. Omar. Yeah, I mean, it's it sucks because every single copy, like I said, I've seen of, of that book. I've got six of them in at the store because we just kept saying, it's damaged, give me another one. It's damaged, give me another one. It's damaged, give me another one. They just kept coming and kept coming and kept coming. Uh, so eventually they just said, we just said, this is crap. You know, we're not, we're not going to order anymore. And they credited us for it. And I think we ended up just selling all of them for super cheap just to get them out of the store. Here's a good question. Here's a good question for you, Gabe. I like good questions. Uh, I recently inherited a collection of mostly golden and silver age issue. Can you give me some guidance on the steps I should take to sell or consign the collection? None of the books are graded. Well, okay, that's good. Awesome. I'm glad that you found a, a collection. You might have some fun, awesome stuff in there. Uh, it's going to be, it's a little difficult to kind of, figure this out for you. I don't know exactly where you are, where you live, but if you have a reputable, good comic book store, and by that, I mean somebody who sells golden and silver age books on a regular basis, like they have a huge selection, uh, talk to them about it. Also, what are you trying to do? Are you trying to sell them? Do you want to keep them? Like what's kind of your end game with that? That will also kind of help figure out what you want to do with them. Uh, a, com a good comic book store will also let you know which ones you should grade to get more money out of it and, and things like that. So if you want, I will recommend you could send me pictures on Instagram. Follow me, Gabe Infinity Watch, and I'll let you know if there's anything in there that you might want to take special care of or special look at or give special attention to. Gabe Infinity Watch on Instagram or Torpedo Comics on Instagram. One way or the other, we'll, I'll, we'll take a look and see what if there's anything that you might want to actually do something about or sell or get rid of or, or spend extra time and get graded so you get more money out of it that'll be your best bet that's cool okay Shahazarad says I want to unload the books and get the maximum dosh nice 
Thank you, Gabe. I will take you up on that. Dosh, you know that's a long time watcher. They they know the Dosh term. That's right. Because I've only heard you say that in my entire life. <laughs> Johnny Randall thinks Darkhawk uh, destroyed your book, Jess. Ah, that is exactly Ooh. what happened. It was yeah. a combination of Darkhawk and Robert Kirkman. It was. <laughs> Darkhawk is on the next shelf. Over the curse of the Darkhawk. He's right again. next door to him. Yeah. It could easily have been him. Probably. Spidey curse. Spidey Pop did not do a good job protecting him. He's too young. He doesn't know any better. No. Hmm. Plus that Spider-Man probably thinks that Miles Morales is taking all of his limelight, so he just let him do it. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Gabe, did you say the Harrow County Library Edition 3 was out of print? Through Diamond, it is it is completely sold out. Uh, mm -hmm. Meaning that it the status of it is uh, back ordered, not stock. Meaning I can make a back order for it and maybe it'll come back out in a, in a, whenever it comes back out. But as of right now, Diamond it does not have any more stock, nor are they getting any more stock from Dark Horse. So wow. stores that get their supplies through Diamond are unable to get more copies of it. So that's what I mean by out of print, meaning that what is out there right now on st that you can find online or on store shelves are probably the last copies out there and stores won't be able to get any more. Mm. Which is, is weird because I, I put that up on our Instagram and yeah. I didn't know this, but apparently they... It hasn't. It's only been released in the U.S. so far. Like it hasn't been released uh, through Amazon or into uh, Canada or any other regions of the world. So I don't know what mean what that means from there. Maybe Amazon gets their. I'm, I'm assuming Amazon gets their books through a different distributor, and I'm assuming maybe hopefully for everybody's sake that foreign uh, well, foreign to us. That the other countries get their books to a different distributor as well. I don't know. But through Diamond right now, it's gone. Are the other volumes in print? Still in print? Yes. One and two are in print. I let me double check. I know one is for a fact. Um volume four isn't out yet. Volume three is out of print. Volume one's in print. Volume two is it's back ordered stocked, which means Diamond believe doesn't have any in their warehouse now and believes they will be getting more from Dark Horse soon. And I think uh, Brooks from the group was saying that there was a reprint announcement or something out there. Here's so a hopefully question. that applies to volume three as well. Mm -hmm. But who knows since this just seems to have happened recently. What should I read if I want to feel inspired? I've been in a bit of a slump these past two months. If you want to feel inspired. When you say you want to feel inspired, you mean you want the comic book to um, sort of uplift you? Have you been in a personal slump or a comic book slump, Mind Funk? Yeah. Because... They're, that's kind of two different things, I think. Like a personal funk, uh, funk, a personal slump is different than a comic book slump. I, yeah, Mr. Awesome's right. I was going to say either Superman or if you can get your hands on Silver Surfer from Slot and Mike Allred, I, that Superman and Silver Surfer both were kind of uplifting to me. What's Superman? Uh, Superman Rebirth, I think. Oh, okay. No, that's good stuff, too. Or All-Star Superman. That's a good one. More. Per oh, he's in a personal slump. Okay, so you need something happy. Yeah. Silver Surfer, then. And personal yeah. uh, All-Star Superman is a good... Uh, All-Star Superman by Morrison is really good. Superman <laughs> Rebirth, I would recommend. 
Super Sons. We talked mm-hmm. about that recently. That's a really great book. <laughs> Super yeah. Sons is very life affirming, as Johnny Rando says. Uh, yeah. Uh, what's that? Mar- that Grant Morrison book that isn't garbage. Um, oh, Mindfunk says I just recently bought that Silver Surfer Omni below cover price after listening to all of your praise. So I guess that may be it. I highly recommend you read that Mindfunk. That uh, I think would be my go-to book to lift you out of uh, lift you out of your personal. Uh, I keep wanting to say funk because that's in your name, uh, slump. ETL says Gwenpool. Yeah. That's a good idea, too. Uh, Shoulder Barbarian was the book I was thinking about by Grant Morrison. Uh, yeah. This one is it's, it's, it's kind of a sad book, but I do think that it's it's an inspiring uh, tale as well. I'll go with Day Tripper. And also, I mean, I don't know what kind of personal slump you're in, but Blankets is one of my favorite, favorite books of all time. Yeah, and I think uh, anything by Greg Thompson is an inspiring, beautiful piece of work that I think will. I don't know if it'll get you out of your funk or your your slump. Thank you, Jess. I'm doing it too now. I know. <laughs> um, but I think it will actually it will at least help take your mind off of it for a while. Ooh, Mark Raid's Daredevil. Yeah. Somebody recommend. My friend Navarro, good choice, bro. It's good stuff. I think um, Jeff Parker's Aquaman is a good one too. Jeff Parker's what? Aquaman? Yeah, it's a swashbuckling adventure, most mostly. So I think it'll be, you know, a good uh, pick me up book. Uh, Bruce Johannes says not going to buy library editions. If they're like sixth gun ones that don't lay flat and don't stay open due to pages glued to spine. Uh, Gosh, I don't remember that being a problem with my sixth gun. Do you remember that game? No, no, I don't remember that being a problem with the library ones. I have the gunslinger ones, which is basically the same thing, but yeah, I don't remember my library editions being a problem with the goon or Hellboy. Uh, what else do I have library editions of? All of those image books, Black Hammer, all those image books, Deadly Class, Low, Black Science. Yeah, no, I, I don't have a problem. Uh, oh, yeah, actually, G. Scott has a good point. Deadpool, Deadpool and Harley Quinn always cheer me up. Yeah, that first omnibus is really funny. I like it a lot. Mm. I'm trying to look around and see if there's anything else on here that might be like really uplifting. No, I'm good. I think that's it. Well, I think we're getting pretty close to the end. Uh, Geo, where can they find you if they want more Geo-ness in their life? That's always a great thing. God bless. Uh, a Week in Geekdom, where I, where I talk about uh, anime, comics, and uh, manga, and everything else that you like and that we all love. Uh, a Week in Geekdom on YouTube. And Gabe, if they want to know how they can fix... If I want to know how I can fix my Miles Morales <laughs> omnibus now that it's all detached, which it did by itself or with Darkhawk's help, where do I go for that? Well, just if you want to find that, that's actually in our chat. Now. I just saw it pop up. <laughs> Thank you. But for everybody else, uh, that is on my YouTube channel, Gabe Infinity Watch. The uh, link is in the chat. Um, not very active on there. But if you want to find any activity from me, you want to check out Instagram, which is Gabe Infinity Watch as well. And then also while you're on Instagram, go ahead and follow Omni Bros Live, where you get your out-of-print notifications as soon as I find out. 
Like today, yes. found out Alpha Flight was out of print. Yeah, you're the first one that, to uh, bring it up. Nobody panic, but panic a little. <laughs> it's just Alpha Flight, whatever. Alpha <laughs> Flight. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to. Somebody just asked what the 50% off books were, and I just closed it. So I'm going back to try and find it. It was Aquaman. Aquaman. Uh, uh, the art, the uh, the Marvel. Marvel thingamajig. <laughs> the Marvel uh, $150 book that cost so much restoration. Um, uh, it's usually five titles, right? Yeah, it's five mm -hmm. titles. The Conan book, right? The Conan, the art of Conan. Yeah. Uh, give me a second. I'll pull up the uh, actual spreadsheets. I should never close that thing until the show is over. So, Aquaman are hardcover. Yeah. Uh, Golden Age Marvel. Uh, Marvel Art of Conan, Old Man Quill. No, hmm. Old Man Quill. Oh, yeah, fifty percent off. Yep. <laughs> and I think that's it. One, two, three, four. Yeah, four. Oh, and then Marvel, yep. the other Marvel 80th anniversary one. So both of the, the, both two. Of the Marvels, okay. uh, the Conan, Old Man Aquaman, Man. and Old Man Quill. Old Man nice. Quill? Yeah. Did I say that? I don't think you did. I don't think I did either. Okay, good. You go. well, I'm glad you picked up on it. Okay, good. Make Havoc nice. right. 90s X-Men will cheer anyone up. So go watch sure. some 90s X-Men. And you can find me, Omnidog, on Omnidog's Vault on YouTube, where I just put up an overview of the Jack Kirby Bronze Age Omnibus. And apparently it did uh, work at first. I thought I was going to have to redo it, but it looks like it did actually transfer properly. So and on Instagram, on Omnidogs underscore Vault. Nice. And thank you. And tomorrow, I'll be putting up a video with Tyler Blunt. We're going to review Doctor Strange Volume One this week, and then Doctor Strange Volume Two next week. Tyler Blunt, cool. you better be reading Doctor Strange right now, not watching <laughs> this show. I know you. You're playing with your daughter or something right now. Or playing Fire Emblem, probably. Probably. Yeah. Okay, everybody. Thank you for watching. Thank you to the chat. The chat was wild and crazy tonight. It was full of great questions. And thank you to the super chatters. We appreciate it. Mm -hmm. And uh, hope everything works out with you, Mind Funk. I hope you feel better. I understand. We've all been there. We get it. Uh, so thank you to the chat. Thank you to all our viewers. Thank you to InStockTrades.com. And thank you to my co-hosts, my fellow Omnibros. Peace and love. Peace and love.